Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is part two of the McCall's 7537 Sew Along. Today we're going to be covering putting the bodice together and adding this trim. So let's get started. So the first thing that the pattern would like us to do is gather the lower edge of the front bodice, the lower edge of the back bodice and also stay stitch around the neckline. So I'm going to get that done for my back bodice and I have marked on the gather points with my friction pen so I know where I'm gathering up to. I'm going to get that done for the back bodice and for the main bodice and I'm going to get the neckline stay stitched. I have also interfaced the facing pieces so you should have four of the front facing and two of the back facing and you need to interface two sets of those so two front and one back so you will end up with a set that are interfaced and a set that's not interfaced. When I do gathering stitches I have done one line of stitches three eighths of an inch away and then I've done another line of stitches the same three eighths of an inch away so the stitching line is actually in between these gathers and I find that that gives me very nicely finished gathers uh, when I have sewn the seam line in. I obviously then remove the gathering stitches. I feel like I end up with a nice, nice set of gathers there. I've got my stitch length on a 4.5 or a 5. The, my, my, my machine actually does go up to a 6, but I find that it gathers... If I, if I sew it with a six, it will, it will actually gather it as I go and I don't want that. So uh, put your stitching length up, don't back stitch at the beginning or the end. As I say, three eighths of an inch away from the edge and then three eighths of an inch away from that so that your actual stitching or sewing line is in between the two. I have also stay stitched my neckline. This is the neckline of the back piece. This is the only bit that the patterns asked me to stay stitch so far. So I have run a line of stitching with my normal construction stitch length, which is a 2.5 on my machine. And I've done that a half half an inch away from the raw edge. That's our stitching line is five eighths of an inch. So we want to be close to that, but we don't want to be on that stitching line. We've done this so that we can clip into this to make this fit into other curves if we need to. And also to make sure that this neckline doesn't stretch out of shape. So the next thing that it would like us to do is stitch the bodice back and bodice front sections together at shoulder and sides, leaving side opening below large circle. So I'm going to stitch my shoulder seams together with a French seam. I'm going to stitch this seam together with a French seam and I'm going to be using my bias binding to finish off this edge here. I'm actually going to leave this completely open. I'm not going to stitch that down just yet. I want to get the midriff and the skirt on so that I can bind the edge all in one go and then I can stitch up this piece put the zip in and then put the sleeves in. That's just my preference of the way of, that I would like to do this because of the way I'm finishing my seams. If you're finishing your seams by pinking or overlocking and you've already done that, then you won't need to, you can stitch down to this large circle. And you want to leave it open on the left side below the large circle and it's the right side that we're sewing up. If you've watched any of my tutorials, you guys know how much I love French seams. So that's what I'm gonna be doing at every opportunity. The first thing that you wanna note about French seams is that you're sewing the wrong side sides of the garment together. So I've matched up my notch which is just under this pin here so I've matched up the notch and then there is like a, a kind of uh, the seam allowance is built into that there so you should end up with a nice matching point here. I've done that for both side seams. I'm now going to sew this at a quarter of an inch and then trim that seam allowance down and then I'll show you the next steps. One tip I have got, my presser foot is actually three eighths of an inch. My needle is three eighths of an inch away from this edge when it is centered like this. I find that with slippery materials like this, I'm using a rayon or a viscose for this one. You can, the fabric sometimes can get suck down underneath if you try to sew too close to the edge. So what I like to do is leave the this foot on and I'll move the needle over to the right so that I am stitching at a quarter of an inch but then the presser foot is right up against the edge of the fabric so fingers crossed it shouldn't get sucked down into the feed dogs. That's my little trick for doing that and it's worked for me well so far. Once you've sewn your seam at a quarter of an inch you then want to trim your seam allowance in half so I have taken it down to one eighth of an inch. I've done that for both sides. So I'm now going to go and press this so that the right side together and then I can sew the final seam which will be at three eighths of an inch. Okay so I have sewn, pressed this right side together and I've sewn the seam at three eighths of an inch and that's given us our five eighths of an inch seam allowance taken up into this French seam. I'm going to press these seams towards the back and then I'm going to do the same for the right hand side leaving the left side completely open. The next thing that we're going to do is baste interface sections to wrong sides of two front band sections and one back band section. 
along seam lines. No, remaining band sections will be used as facing. Huh? Oh, okay. So they're using sewing interfacing and I've used fusible. So that's fine. I, But you want to have, as I said, you want to have two of the front ones uh, fused, two of the front ones no fusing, one of the back ones fused, one of the back ones no fusing. So the next one is stitch front band sections together at centre front below large circles. Stitch front band and back band together at shoulders. Stay stitch inner edge below notches as shown. Okay, so we want to do what I have got laid out here. So I've got the back facing with the interfacing on it face up and then I have put the two front facings with the interfacing on it face down so it's right sides together and we're going to sew five eighths of an inch along those two lines there. I'm going to need to get my pattern piece out again because when I ironed it I've lost my marking but we're going to be sewing up to the large circle at the bottom here and then we are going to be stay stitching in these edges here. So I've sewn the shoulder seams uh, closed for and I've done this for the facing and the lining piece and the uninterfaced one is the lining piece this is going to go on the outside. I have stay stitched from the bottom edge up to the notch on all four edges and I have stitched up to the large circle and I've just pressed that open. Now the pattern actually wants you to sew the interfaced one on to sew uh, right sides together and sew all the way around the edge and then it wants you to sew on the uninterface the lining one to the raw edge and turn it to the inside. Now I've got this bias binding that I'm actually going to use in place of the grow grain ribbon so this trim here. So I'm actually going to do mine a little bit differently and I'm hoping it's going to work. <laughs> I shall soon find out if it doesn't. What I'm going to do, I'm going to sew it so that the seam is actually on the outside, which I'm then going to attach this to, and then I'm going to top stitch this down all the way around. And fingers crossed that will work. And I'm going to use this throughout the garment on the midriff section and on the skirt as well. So it should, in theory, kind of tie everything together. And so I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that next. Okay, so the first part of my experiment, and I really hope this works, is to pin together the lining to the facing, and I'm doing that around the neckline, which is the shorter line, and it's the one that comes to where we've sewn up to the large circles. And you want to be really careful to make sure that you start and finish your stitching at the large circles on both sides. I like to pin one side and then not pin the other side and then start sewing, get get some of the way around and then I can go in and pin this side. I find that much easier than trying to get everything lined up right at the beginning. So we're going to sew this at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I have sewn the lining to the facing up to the points. Uh, this one went a little bit squiffy um, on the interfacing side I think. That one's okay. Uh, yeah that one was a little bit off but I have turned it through and the interfacing side as I say is going to be the outside of your garment and uh, that looks, I mean obviously it's not pressed but I'm happy with that. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to top stitch all of our seam allowance into the facing. Now you can go and press this and then trim this trim the seam allowance and then top stitch but I'm going to top stitch first and the thing as I say this is your outer your interface one is your outer the uninterface one is your lining and you want to be stitching all of the seam allowance onto the lining and that's just going to help it roll nicely and sit nice and flush when it's against your body. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to top stitch or under stitch. This is what this is called. I'm going to under stitch all the seam allowance to the facing and that is literally stitching one eighth of an inch away from the ditch that you've just sewn, that stitching line that you've sewn there, that ditch you want to be one eighth of an inch into the lining and again stitching down making sure the important part is to catch all of the seam allowance in that line of stitching as well. We can then go and trim, clip into the corners and press this and again fingers crossed this is going to work out as I want it to because you know after all this <laughs> I have 
understitched everything down and then I've gone around and I've actually used my pinking shears and this is you, you can clip into the curves and just trim the seam allowance you don't need to do this this is never going to be visible but I always find that um, using these really helps me get nice and close to the edge and kind of notches the edge for me as well I will go back and to clip into them a little bit more if I can't get this to lie flat but that's my next job is to go and press everything so that it's all lying to the inside and I like to press from the the lining side so that I can see the understitching because what you want is to see a little bit of the outer just rolling over into view when you are pressing this down that's what you want to aim for is that little bit of the outer being on show so I'm going to go and get this pressed then we can get it sewn to the bodice I've pressed the edge as you can see and if we have a look at the underside as you can see there's just that little bit of the outer layer rolling to the inside so the next thing I'm going to do is baste all of the raw edges together just so that it becomes much easier to handle as a one piece of fabric rather than trying to make sure that I'm catching everything and worrying about missing a part of the seam so I'm going to base this edge together and then all the way around those edges and I'm going to do that three eighths of an inch as long as it's within the seam out allowance it doesn't really matter and when I say baste, I'm going to use it with, I'm going to stitch it with a construction stitch length. It doesn't need to be a, a, it's not going to be any stitching that we're going to remove. So it doesn't need to be a longer stitch length. So I'm literally going to sew all the way around at three eighths of an inch with the construction stitch length of 2.5. For the next stage of my grand plan, fingers crossed this works, I have got the wrong sides together so that the seam is actually going to be on the outside. That way the, it, the inside is all nicely finished in keeping with my French seaming that I have done and then I can put on the trim on the outside. So what you want to do is you want to match up the raw edge at the bottom. You want to match up the notches, the side seams. So whenever I cut something on the fold, I always like to make a notch at the top and the bottom so that I can match those up. So I've notched the top and the bottom of the pattern piece and also the facings. So they've matched up. And then you want to ease everything else in all the way around. So I'm going to stitch this with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to press it so that the seam is going towards the bodice away from the facing. That's the plan or the neckline. Wish me luck. I actually think this is going to work, which is great. So I sewed the, as I, sh I showed you, I sewed the facing or the, this neckliney piece. Um, what do they call it? Front band. I showed this front band on. And as I said, it was wrong sides together. So we've got the understitched side to the wrong side of the lining. And that's what the, this is going to look like. There will be another line of stitching going here. And then because I didn't know if this was going to work, I kind of guesstimated this. So I have sewn the bias binding on to the stitching line at 5 eighths of an inch so that this will look like that when it's turned out and you can there's a couple of ways you can do this so you can measure the distance of your bias binding from the fold to the raw edge and you can trim down the seam allowance so that you can match up the raw edges nicely you can guesstimate like I did I did have to kind of unpick a little bit of stitching which was showing from the first line with we securing the front band to the bodice but that's fine I was out by like less than an eighth of an inch it was less than an eighth of an inch there was just a tiny bit on show so what I need to do now is go in and I need to clip all of this seam allowance and reduce all of this bulk and there's lots of curves and we want this to lie nice and flat so again I'm going to get my pinking shears out and I'm going to clip all the way around this so that it will all ni lie nice and flatly. I did press mine first which will make this next process a little bit more difficult because I wanted to double check that my theory would work and I think it is going to so I'm now going to go and clip into all of this seam allowance to reduce the bulk and as I say around the curves to make sure that it will curve nicely. And then we can top stitch this bias binding down, which is going to look like that. And I'm actually going to top stitch both sides, although obviously I don't need to top stitch this side, but I want it to look cohesive. So I'm gonna do that for every single stage of adding this bias binding, top stitch this side and this side. So I'm gonna get that uh, trimmed and then top stitched. Okay, so I'm about to do some top stitching. I haven't pressed this over as yet. And I'm going to give it a go without having done that. I think it'll be okay. But I've been very, I've done it, f I've pinned it down flat and I've made sure that everything is nice and smooth underneath so that nothing is buckled because that's, you don't want to end up with too much fabric puckering under here. I also have my blind hem foot on. If, again, for anyone who's watched any of my videos, I like to use this for top stitching because it has this guide down the center, which I can run up, up against the edge of the bias binding, which gives me a nice continuous line of stitching the whole way around. So I'm going to get this done and show you what it looks like. 
that's worked really well I'm really pleased with that so the bias binding's lying nice and flatly I've top stitched both sides so it looks even and then the inside is obviously nicely finished too because all the raw edges are underneath there so that's really cool if you have any questions at all let me know in the comments section down below and I will do my best to answer them I hope you've enjoyed today's video if you have please give it a thumbs up if you haven't yet please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon bye